Good morning, everybody. We are at the Earl Bacher Crank In this morning, and the today's topic is going to be unknitting and um, kitchenering. Everybody's worst favorite project is kitchenering their toes. Um, hopefully, this will make it easier for you. Um, but the, the first thing I wanted to go through is, is unknitting because invariably what happens to me when I'm, when I'm doing my heels is I get to the end and I forget that I have to stop in the middle to put the rest of the needles down. And then I've already finished the row and now what do I do, you know? So I have a pseudo heel on here that didn't work out so well. But anyway, I'm pretending like I am finishing my, the last of my heel. So I'm pushing down and knitting back. Okay. And then I'm pushed down and I knit back, push down, coming back. And here's where I should stop in the middle. Darn. <laughs> I went too far. What do I do now? Okay. So now we're going to unknit. Um, I don't know if any of you are, are flatbed knitters or not, but we do this all the time on the flatbeds. We just go, and it comes right off. It's a little dicier on a sock machine because um, you don't have the same downward tension on your things. I'm going to take my weights off um, so that I don't make anything run if I make a mistake. But to unknit, all you have to do is take that yarn, kind of give a little downward tug on your fabric right here, and pull up and pop that stitch off. Next stitch over, I pull my yarn in here. I pull up. Okay, my hands are in the way. Oh, okay. Oh, I was, I was sorry, I'll remove that. Okay. So I'm pulling a little pressure on the fabric right here. I'm bringing the yarn around to the center front of the needle and pulling that thread and popping the stitch back onto the needle. I come right back, pull it back around like this and pull up on the yarn. See how that stitch is balanced on top of the, of the needle? <laughs> Can you see that? Okay, so now... Oops. I went too quick. So I'm pulling up. You see how the stitch is balanced on top? And when I just pull a little bit, it, it drops right back down on the needle. I think I need to go lower down. Okay. Hmm. Because they're, they want to the other side. Try again. Okay. So I pull up and just pull that. Well, all you're doing is you're, you're reseating that stitch back on the needle using the yarn that's in the, in the current stitch. So you just pop them up and off. So, and if you're nervous about doing that, you can do it with your red tool too. You can take your, um, take your red tool, lift that pearl bump off the back and onto the needle and then move your thread around. Lift the pearl bump up and over and move your thread back around. If you have something that's tight or, um, you're actually, if you're ripping in your heel, a lot of times I will do it this way. See, I almost made a mistake here. Um, I'll do it with the with my red tool because I have a little more control over it. I can I can uh, nothing's happening that I don't make happen. So it's a little slower, but it's a safer way to rip. Okay, but in the interest of time, you see you you don't have to go really slow. It just comes up and off. Okay, so and I don't for this case, for the case where I really wanted to stop here, I really only needed to rip about back yeah, back to here, but I got carried away showing you what to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to get your knitting restarted because if you just try to start it here, you're going to make a mess. Trust me. Ask me how I know. Um, okay, so after you're done ripping, and a lot of times while I'm ripping, again, if it's something fancy like lace or the middle of a heel or something, as I rip. I'll pull the needles back up out of work. But before you start doing anything after you've ripped, every needle in your cylinder is going to be out of work. Every stinking single one of them. 
because now I can move my yarn carrier anywhere I have to be and nothing happens. Okay. Okay. Nothing's going to fall off. <laughs> Aha, the aha moment. So now I, my thread's coming out way over here, right? So the very first stitch that I want to knit is this one. So I only put that needle down. And I move my yarn carrier around to where that stitch is. So you see it's going to get ready to knit right there. So before I go any further, I have to get the rest of my needles down that I want to knit. So I just start putting them down. And remember, this was the case where, oh, dang, I forgot to stop in the right place. And I really wanted to put all of my needles down to continue on my foot. So I'm putting all my needles down, checking all my latches. A closed latch is a drop stitch 100% of the time. And I do, I open, I put my needles down and I check for latches visually and tactily. I feel for that hook under here. And even then I sometimes miss them. So I'm gonna put down needles all, all the way around until I can't anymore because my cam is in the way. Straighten out my yarn. And somebody taught me once said, when, you, when you've been messing with your machine, it's a good idea to just give your machine 100% check from the yarn through the mass. Is everything threaded correctly? Is it in my yarn guide correctly? Is it coming out in the right spot here before you touch the crank? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm ready to start knitting. Ah, I haven't checked everything. My weights are not on. <laughs> Okay, my weights are back on. So now I can start cranking. And when I'm, after I've messed with the machine, the first row I crank, I watch every latch close, every stinking latch. I don't go fast. I don't just go. Roof. Okay, so I'm watching. And the place I'm watching is back here. This is where the magic happens, not up here. Everybody wants to watch in front of where the carriage is going. Watch back here where your needles are closing. And I can see every latch close with yarn in the hook. And I can watch that stitch form and knit off there. Okay, we're doing good. Haven't dropped anything. Now I can finish dropping the rest of my needles. Okay, I've completed that first round and now I'm good to just go. Now I've knit my foot rows, do my toe, everything's cool. No, no harm, no file, no drop stitches, no tears. It's wonderful. Questions? So that was after you had finished your heel. Yeah, so I, typically I get, you know, I get going back, back, <laughs> oh, oh, that was the last one. Now I can't put my needles down because my cams are in the way. So that's the most typical place where I have to rip. I will say that if I am ripping stitches, um, I won't rip more than two rounds. If it takes more than two rounds, I'm just going to take it off and start over. Because it is, it is time consuming. You can drop stitches and make the mess worse. So like my rule of thumb is if I got to knit more than, unknit more than two rounds, forget it. I'll just start over. Um, so we'll pretend like that's all done. And we're going to start with our Kitchener now. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, I'm going to show that, right? Okay, yeah. So you're saying, even if you've done the top and the ankle and the heel, and you can do that with the shoe, you would start the whole top over again? I would. Wow. Uh, it, well, that, well, once you get to, you know, when you get to the point where you get a million socks, starting to sock over is just not that big a deal. <laughs> and sometimes it's the easier thing to do. So I do a lot of I do a lot of lace socks. So unknitting on lace is really tough because you have to get the stitches off and then you have to unhook them from the needle if they got moved to and move them over. And get, you know, so it's like, well, maybe it's just easier to start over. So let's see. 
Oh, good. She's got the she's got the Kitchener cheat sheet over there. All right. So for Kitchenering, um, the the trick is no. Okay, let me say this about Kitchenering. There are, there are two ways, of course, to Kitchener. There's Kitchener from the right side, and there's Kitchener from the wrong side. I don't ever, I don't, I never bothered to learn Kitchener from the wrong side because it only works most of the time. Kitchener from the right side works 100% of the time. And, and the reason I say that is, so if you're doing like a circular scarf where you have to Kitchener the ends together, you can't Kitchener from the wrong side because you can't get to it, right? So, and it, wrong side is a little easier maybe to see if you're beginning at it, but I don't find I don't find kitchening from the right side difficult, and you only have to learn one thing. So that's what I teach, kitchener from the right side. <laughs> so what that means is that when you have your toe, you're going to have, the, your waist yarn comes off like this, okay? And you're, and you're gonna be kitchenering with the, with the knit side, yeah, the knit side out, okay? Which means we're gonna create monkey lips and, and the thing I want you to look at is you have a tail on your, um, on your sample toe there that's coming out of the, the end of the sock at the, at the corner. Oh, oh, there was one other thing I was going to explain to you. And I, and I had actually tried to, I kind of wanted to have a toe ready to finish for you, but I didn't have my own machine up here and it was not cooperating. But... You know, everybody tells you when you're doing the toe, the difference between doing a toe and doing a heel is that you put both needles down. The, the, the last needle that is in the toe, both sides go down at the same time. What that does is that eliminates one row from your toe. So you will finish with your carriage, your yarn carriage on the left side of the machine with the handle cranked back. And then you cut your yarn, put your waist yarn on, stop halfway, and then continue on around. The reason for that is what you're doing when you're kitchenering is you are adding a row of knitting to your sock. You are duplicate stitching the last row into the sock. So that's why they want you to leave out the last row on the sock machines, because if you add the extra, if you add one extra row, yeah, it'll come out okay, but you get these little dog ears at the end because there's too many rows for the for the kitchener to actually match up. So that's why you finish your toe with both um, last stitches down at the same time. So then when you start your kitchenering, you're going to look on the inside of your sock, and it's, it's always obvious because you have this big, long tail where to start. So you go to where the big, long tail is, and you're going to see all this mess in here. So we know we have that right side. So I kind of pull, tag, give a tug on my waist yarn to pull that up. And again, you see how important it is to have contrasting yarn. Because you have to be able to see all those little curl bumps or, or life's a nightmare. Um, the other thing then I want you to do, and uh, I need to grab a couple of stitch markers from the table over there. Can somebody hand me two? So the other thing that I like to do on mine, because when you get to the end of the Kitchener, I'm making it really hard for her to do this. <laughs> Sorry. It's better here, but it's okay. Is um, there any way, could we make the screen like, like yeah. full, full, until we get to the actual, you'll see. Remove the fabric? Yeah, yeah. Let's take it bigger. Sure. Oh. Sorry, yeah, not, when, when I, yeah, we'll we'll put the. <laughs> if I would, if I'd been thinking, you can look at my shirt if you want to see the pattern, the diagram. <laughs> um, if I'd have been thinking, I'd have put a poster up for the pattern. So what I'm looking at here, okay, so my tail is over here on this end, and my and I'm looking at the opposite side of the sock where the two sides come together right here. Do you see this? See this little hole right here? Yeah. So this stitch is on the front half and this stitch is on the back half. And take those two stitches and I capture them with a stitch marker. And the reason is by the time you get to the end of the Kitchener, it's 
really hard because those stitches want to dive and bury into your fabric, and then you then you get trouble. You can't find them, you lose them, and you end up having to weave them back in after the back. It's not it's not perfect. Is there one yellow and one white? No, two yellows. Yeah, two yellow and two yellow. One on each side of the hole. One on each side of the hole. Can, do you see in the di in the in the video there the here's the hole that separates the two um, halves of your sock, and then this is the the um, stitch to the left of the hole, and this is the stitch to the right of the hole. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn around to the other end of the sock, and I'm going to get my tail out. I've already threaded my needle, so you didn't have to watch me fumble. Um, make sure you don't have too, your, your yarn isn't too doubled over, because if you get too close in here, they end up pulling two threads through your stitches, and that's a no-no. Um, so I, I've just tugged again on my little tail here, and I'm going to hold it and keep it out of the way. But what I want you to see is you have stitches over here, lower, and you have stitches up here that are higher. And your tail is coming out right here. So the way you start the Kitchener is you take your needle and you go up in the first stitch to the right of your tail. Pull it through. Oh no, there's a knot in my yarn. Believe it or not. Do you have any more toes? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Rather than fight with my knot, I just cut it off, so, which means I probably won't have enough to do the whole sock, you know. But since I did that, I guess I can go ahead and show you how um, how to use the needle threader that's in the little kits. You put the needle threader through the eye, you lay your yarn into the hook, and pull it through. No fuss, no much. It's easy to do, even with fuzzy, bulky yarn. Okay, so we're back to the beginning here. I'm finding where my tail is. I'm going to just get a new seam as I undo this. All right. All right, I'm going to redo that very first step for you. So I have stitches. Whoa. Whoops. All right. I have stitches on this side. There's like one, one, two, three stitches there. And then I have stitches up higher to the right. One, two, three stitches to the right. Is everybody following along with that? Do you see that on your sock? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to go up. My needle goes up in the first stitch to the right of the of the tail. Here's my tail. And I'm going to pull through. But I'm not going to pull it real tight. This first part I keep pretty loose so I can see where I'm at. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to go up in the stitch that your tail was coming out of. Okay, so the trick to this, to remembering how to start your Kitchener is up, up. Okay, so now I have yarn coming out of the top and the yarn is coming out of the left side of the toe. The next step is to come across and go down into the stitch that I have yarn coming out of. So my yarn is going in a path like this and up like this, and I'm going to go down into the stitch that already has yarn in it. Got that? Okay. And then I'm going to go up in the stitch up next to it. You with me? Is anybody lost? I am yeah. lost. Okay. Let me undo and show you again. Okay, was everybody good with the up, up part? No. Okay. One more time. 
I'm undoing, so yeah, don't worry about that. Okay. I'll, I'll start at the very beginning again here. So here are my three lower stitches on the left, the hole that separates the left from the right, and three stitches that are kind of up and to the right. Okay, I'm looking at mine, and my white, the waist yarn, and then my yellow is, is on the top part of the toe, on the left side. Uh, get, a different, get another toe. <laughs> Try another toe. Maybe that one got finished wrong. Well, his, his is on the left side. Is that where his feet? So you're... Are we looking at... Well, I don't, this is kind of silly, but when we're looking at the screen, it's the opposite? Yeah, Oh, do not turn your sock inside out. You want no, your you want your um, knit side out. Okay, your your pearl sides are together. Yes. Yeah, okay, is. and then I'm just I'm just yeah, kind of opening it up to the. I'm oh, sorry. They get, I forgot the camera's got to see this. <laughs> I'm just opening it up to the away from me. Well, I, I don't I can't I can't tell you if that is. Yeah, come on over and see. Come on over to and see it in person. Maybe the maybe the camera is making it backwards. Okay, so you're. I'm gonna. I'm trying to turn it around for you. So my tail is coming. So it's coming. See, to me, that's coming up the left side. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So you have three stitches. So you have three stitches here. Okay, and you have these three stitches up here to the right. So if you look in this diagram, these are the bottom stitches on the left. These are the top stitches on the right over here. Okay. You're going to go up in this one. Okay. And up in this one. Okay. Okay? Okay. Sure, sure, no problem. Okay. So here's the, here's the deal. My tail's coming out of here, and if you're looking at this diagram here, I have three little stitches here, and I have three stitches up here, and this is going up in this one. So really, you just want to go do the stitch next to the down in the old. That's right. The what you are right to the hole on each side. Right. So okay. up there. Just I got that my needle. I think it's the way I wrap it. Okay. Go back up. Okay. And then and then and then the next one is up in the one that you have your yarn coming out of. So it is back to the other side. Back to the other side, yes. So up to the right and then up in the to the left. Okay. Sure, no problem. Whatever. Okay. Okay, so are we good with the up up? Okay. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down into this this stitch right here has thread has a has yarn already in it, right? It's going up through here and then it goes up through here. Is everybody with me? Oh, are we ready for the for the next stitch down? Yes. Okay. So I go down in the stitch that has yarn in it. And again, I'm kind of keeping things loose so I can kind of see where things are for the moment. So just to clarify, when you say you're going down to the yarn, when that has yarn in it, is that the one first one? That That's the first one that you went up in. Yep. Okay. Then I'm going to move over to a new stitch and take the needle out to up, move up in there. Okay, so now I'm, I'm, but I'm still on the right hand side, so everything's happened on the right uh, in the last two stitches. Now I have to cross over and go down in the stitch, the, the first stitch that I had yarn in on the other side. So that's this one right here. Right. Okay, so you're going down into the one that we had yarn in the very first stitch that we went up into. And then what did you do? Okay, then we went up in the stitch, the new stitch next to it. To so right. that's right here to the right. Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to cross over and go down into the second stitch that I went up in. Okay. That was 
like the one that the original yarn is getting out of. Yes, great. Okay, and and what you're doing here is you're connecting your your knitting. You have to always attach to a stitch that has yarn in it in order for it to be closed. Okay, so I go down in the one that has the, the stitch in it, the thread in it, and up in the one next to it. Okay, so now I have this kind of rat's nesty thing here that isn't going to look very pretty if I'm done when I'm done. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take and I'm going to fold my sock like I want it to be when I'm done. Okay, and I'm just going to take my yarn and I'm going to adjust these stitches to pull them up tight. So they, so those are finished now. These, uh, I made my waist yarn on these a little yarn long so that they wouldn't come unravel when I was carrying them around. They're a little longer than you would want. But. So then I'm going to, I'm making monkey lips here. I'm just kind of folding my waist yarn back so that I can see the, the um, pearl bumps. Okay, so I'm, I'm on, on the far side of my knitting. And now I have to come across and go down in the one that has has a stitch in it already. So that's this one right here. So you always go down into the one that is stitching in it and up or out in the one next to it. Are you on the left side or the right? I'm in, well, um, I uh, yes, I'm on the right hand side, but I have switched it now so that it's toward me and away from me, so that I, so that my, you see how my I've reoriented my sock. We were working on it this way to start it, and then I pull it tight and I switch it so that it's horizontal. So now I've come out of the stitch that is um, closest to me, and it's a new stitch, okay? Now I'm gonna go down into the stitch that has yarn in it, which is this one right here. See, there's the yarn that's coming across right there. This is the stitch that has yarn in it. So I go down into the knitting and out the new stitch. Then I go down into the knitting, the one that has the stitch, it has the yarn in it, and out into the new stitch. Okay, down into the stitch that has the yarn in it. Try not to split your waist yarn because then you end up having to cut it out. And then up into the next. Down into the one that has a stitch and out in the next one. I've got a stupid question. Okay. You said you're working it from the right side, but you're actually working it from the inside. The, well, what we mean by in, right side and wrong side is if you look at my toe, I have not turned it inside out. Okay, my sock is not inside out. It is it is right side out. Okay, and I'm just working on the edges of it. Okay, on the inside. Okay, so I'm going down into the one that has a stitch in it and out in the one next to it. Come across and down, up, into the thing, into the knitting, and out the one next to it. And I'm not gonna have enough yarn to get all the way across this one. So down and out the next one. Okay. So so does anybody need me to come to your elbow and and or bring it up here and get some help. Everybody's good. So I don't. 
This is kind of boring just watching me do this across, but um, but I'll try to. I don't know. Like I said, I cut my yarn, so I don't know enough to get all the way across. Oh. So the other thing I like to do after I get a little ways is I will take my sock and turn it sideways, and then I kind of pull it apart like this. And what I'm looking for is nice, even stitching. If I see something that's that's a little off, that tells me I missed one. So I want to see a nice, perfect pattern that marches right along this. So, so I'm looking at this spacing. So this should be perfectly spaced right along here on both sides of the, of the sock. And, and if it's not, then I need to pull it out and go back because I missed a stitch. And if you go and do that every little bit you as, as you go along, you're not going to get to the end and go, oh. <laughs> yeah. OK, so we just go down into the one. Keep my yarn threaded because I made it too short because of the knot, darn it. Um, the other thing, if you if you're not sure if you've got the right stitch that you're going down in, again, you can kind of pull it apart a little bit, and you'll see where the yarn is coming out. You want to go in there, and then back out. Down in. Now, the, and the the goal is for you to match the gauge of your knitting. So you want to just kind of look at your stitches and say, okay, is that about like what I have on the rest of my sock? If it's not, you might want to pull it up or, or loosen a little bit, but you want to try to match the gauge of your of your knitting. I am just out of yarn here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. So here's here's another little helpful hint. Um, I, my yarn is too short because I cut it. I had a knot in it, and I didn't want to waste time to pull the knot out. So it's too short to get all the way across. So I'm going to leave a tail on it and just stuff it down in there. And I'm going to pretend like I have. Um, I have just come down into this stitch like I would normally have, okay? I'm gonna leave a tail, and I'm gonna come out in the next one. I'm gonna move across and go down, leaving my tail out, okay? And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold on to that tail and snug that stitch up the way it needs to be, and I'm just gonna leave that tail. Okay, so I'm, I went down in, and now I'm gonna come out. So if you do, sometimes I, I screw up and I don't leave a long enough tail to do my Kitchener. So you could, you don't have to give up. You can go ahead and start it and add another yarn. It just means that when you get done, you'll have to weave that tail in. Out, come across and go down. Out. Now you know why I use the 54 cylinder. <laughs> If I'd have had a 48, I would have. Out. Out. 
So does anybody need one on one here that it need me to come around and see what you're doing? Shout. So we're going to have a whole room of perfect kitcheners after this. <coughs> I need to get to the end so I can show you what to do with the stitch markers. not very interesting talking wise, but for the guys that are on video, sorry about that. Down in toward the knitting and out the new stitch. Down in toward the knitting and out the new stitch. And then I'm going to check and see how my stitches look. I haven't missed any. That was pretty good. Okay, we're getting toward, I'm getting toward the end here. So I'm going to pull my stitch markers out toward the outside. Guys? Woohoo! So I'm getting down toward the end here. And I am, um, I'm going to pull my stitch markers out to the side here. And the purpose of those stitch markers is to keep those stitches from getting buried when I get to the end. And as I get to the end, I tend to loosen up a little bit on my, on my stitch um, just to keep that stuff from burying. And so I'm going down and out and down and out. And as I get to the end, I'm watching, I'm looking at these stitches and keeping note of what's where so that I don't get lost. Down and out. Down and out. So those are a little looser than I like them, so I'm going to kind of snug them up with my needle. So now I'm getting up to these very last couple of stitches again. All right, down, and I'm a little loose here. We'll go and fix that in a minute after we're sure we haven't, haven't missed anything. I'm going down, and I'm going out into the one with the stitch marker in it. <coughs> out. Then I'm going to take the stitch marker off because I can't. It's not going to get buried now. I have it. I have it captured. Okay, so now I'm coming across into the stitch that has a stitch and out into my one with the stitch marker. Look at that. I didn't drop the last two stitches of my kitchener. Okay, yeah, and I'm going to take the stitch marker off now. I don't need any more. Before I say I'm done, I I do this. I take and I stretch it apart like this, and I just make sure that I don't have any dropped or missed stitches all the way through. Okay. And then to get my waste yarn off, I take my needle and I take it back into that last stitch that I have a stitch coming out of right here, and then I push it down into the sock. down into the sock. Now my needle's out of the way and I can take my waist yarn off. Whoa. So waist yarn I just I just pull it, ravel it.
And invariably, I catch, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't do it real clean, and I end up, oh, this was actually pretty good. I usually have some little um, fibers of my waste yarn that are caught in the stitches that I put in. I snip them with my scissors. Snip the waste yarn with your scissors. Very carefully, you don't want to stitch, snip your stitches at that point. Because that would be really bad, the very last thing on your sock and your record. Now, how many rows did you start with on your waist yarn? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I usually do about 10 rows, just enough that um, that it will stay in place. It won't unravel while I'm carrying my socks around. The other thing you can do um, with your waist yarn, if you want, um, to make it not come undone is steam them. I steamed all these so that the <laughs> stitches would set and they don't, they tend to not unravel as easily. Then the last thing I do before I say, declare it done, is I turn the, turn the sock around and then I poke my finger into the corners and see if there are any stitches popping up. It, I, no matter how careful I am, sometimes I miss one. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pull this across, looking at across here, and I'm gonna poke my finger into that corner too. I have no missed stitches. Now those are a little loose because I ended up making it loose so you could see where my stitching was. I would, I would tighten those up a little bit in real life, but just so you could see what I was doing. Now you see I have this tail here. I have to weave this one in because I ran out of yarn and started a new one. That's what that tail's all about. Um, and then I'll have a second tail right here that I'll have to weave in because it's uh, because of, of the restart. Then when I, to, but to finish my toe, I just kind of check my stitch lengths and then I take my knitting and I fold it on a diagonal so that my stitches are, are diagonal like that. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna wrap it into these diagonal stitches. See how I just roll them up onto the needle there? About four or five of them, I guess. Pull that through. Then I turn it around. And I take the next row down. Wrap my needle through them. Okay, and pull it through. And now when you, now we, if you can look at, if you see your, your weave in there, you have a change of a, a strong change of direction so that it doesn't come undone, but the weave is diagonal. So it doesn't create a bump in your, in your fabric and you don't see it on the right side at all. And then I just cut it. And I never cut it right up against the yarn. I leave, I just leave a little bit. Nobody's going to see it, and that so that's done. And then I do the same kind of weave on the on those extra tails up there. So now we have a kitchener sock. Questions? Anybody need some help?